In this video, I want to talk about uh, evaluating piecewise defined functions. So first off, just as an example of what a piecewise defined function is, it's a function that is uh, basically um, where you've sort of cut and pasted uh, some existing functions uh, together to form a new one. And so uh, here's an example of one here. And so you can see um, there's kind of a couple of parts to it. Over here we have f of x equals, and then we have some formulas here on the left side, and then a bunch of if statements. And then over here what we have are some conditions on the function. And so, so there's two parts. There's these conditions over here, and there are the function parts over here. So the formulas, basically. Okay. So just to work a few uh, specific examples, let's say that we wanted, for whatever reason, to find f of minus 3. In other words, when you plug minus 3 into this function, you know, what is the output? And f of 6 and f of 25. So, so the basic procedure is this. Say for f of minus 3, we want to figure out what that value is. What we would do is go over here to the conditions and look at these conditions over here. And then one of these conditions, that is if negative 3 is in fact in the domain of this function, exactly one of these conditions will be true. And so what we would do is just go through and replace x by minus 3 on each of these conditions and see which one will result in a true statement. So, so just going to the first one here, x is less than or equal to uh, 4. If we go to negative 3, right, and we replace that negative 3 in here, we get the statement negative 3 is less than or equal to 4. So that is true. That's a true statement. So, And notice that uh, if I plug the negative 3 in here or the negative 3 in here, right, here I would have a statement that 4 is less than negative 3, and that's uh, false, right, and also less than or equal to 6, but it, 4 is not less than or equal to negative 3. And then here, if I plugged a negative 3 in, I'd have negative 3 is greater than 6, which would also be false. So this is the condition that holds true for negative 3. And so what we want to do then is to use this corresponding formula to evaluate the function. We're going to take the negative 3 and plug it in for x into this formula here. So we would take uh, the x and 2x minus 3 and replace it by negative 3, and then carry out those operations there, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and then minus 3, that is equal to negative 9. And so the output for uh, an input of negative 3 is negative 9. Okay, just going to rewrite our function over here on this page. And then we are next going to figure out what f of 6 is. So again, the same procedure, right? We are going to go check each of these conditions over here, the parts on the right side. Uh, so here, I'm going to plug in a 6, right? Uh, 6 is less than or equal to 4. That would be a false statement, right? Here, uh, if I replace the x by 6, I would get 4 is less than 6, and 6 is less than or equal to 6. That is a true statement, right? 4 is less than 6, and 6 is less than or equal to 6. So this statement right here is the one that is true for the number 6. Notice if I placed 6 in here, I would get the statement 6 is greater than 6, which is false. So, so this is the condition that holds true for 6. So I would use the corresponding formula to evaluate the function at 6. So I would replace uh, the x by 6, and I would get 5 minus 6 squared. That's the same as 5 minus 36, which is equal to negative 31. So the output for an input of 6 would be negative 31. Finally, we want to plug in uh, 25 into this function as an input. And so again, what we would do is scan through each condition until we find the one that holds true for 25. So here, I would, if I replaced x by 25, I would get this statement 25 is less than or equal to 4, which is false. Here, I would get the statement 4 is less than 25 and less than or equal to 6 which is false because 25 is not less than or equal to 6. And finally over here, uh, if I replace the x by 25, I would get 25 is greater than 6, which is a true statement. So, 
So this is the, the condition that holds true for 25. So we would use this corresponding formula over here. So uh, this can sometimes be a little bit confusing for people because they're used to formulas like these above where you plug in an x, but this is just a constant formula. There is no place to plug in the number for x, and so it's just simply that value there. So f of 25 would be equal to 7. And so the output for an input of 25 is equal to 7, and you know that would be the same for any number that's bigger than 6. right? Anything that makes this condition true, the output would just be 7. So that's basically it for evaluating piecewise defined functions, right? You have your conditions over here on the right side generally, and usually separated by an if or a comma, something of that nature. And then over here you have the formulas. When you want to plug in a number or evaluate the function, right, at a specific number, you scan through these and find which condition is true for your uh, number that you want to evaluate the function at. And then once you find which one is true for that particular thing, then you use the corresponding formula and plug the number in there and, and simplify it to get your output. And that's it.